And uh, go ahead, Andy, uh, if you can make some opening comments, please. Our team played well yesterday. Had a big win. Move on here and play an excellent Kansas team tomorrow. We just had practice, just finished practice. And our players are now uh, trying to get off their feet, get some rest in preparation for uh, a big game tomorrow. All right, again, if, uh, if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. We'll start with Adam Grossbart. Andy, Kansas is ninth in Ken Palm's adjusted defense rankings. What stands out when you look at their defense on film? Well, they're very big. They uh, have all their guards are 6'5", 6'6", and they have shot blocking with McCormick. He's 6'10", and very athletic, and, uh, and then Wilson is 6'8", so that they have great size across their, uh, their roster, and they, uh, they keep everything on the side of the floor, and they play very hard, so they're a very good defensive team. Getting to play, you know, one of those blue blood programs like Kansas at Hinkle Fieldhouse, is that kind of one of those unique March experiences that you know, you hope for as a team? Well, I think that's what March Madness is all about. You play different, you play teams from different leagues that you may or may not play in an out-of-conference season. We were scheduled to play Kansas this year at uh, at Kansas before the COVID canceled our preseason out of, con or our regular season out-of-conference games early in November. Uh, so now we get to play them here in the NCAA tournament at Hinkle Fieldhouse. It should be a great basketball game and uh, we'll go give it our best shot. Okay, Ryan Young. Andy, what is the scouting process um, for a game like this? How many of Kansas's games do you go back and watch? What's kind of the, the depth of research you do on them? Well, it's a little difficult here. Their most recent games, uh, they, they play four guards a lot. And Wilson will be back for our game. He's been out the last uh, game or two because of the COVID, but he'll be back for our game. He's a very good player, averages 12 and 8. And McCormick is uh, he, he was out for one game, but uh, he came back and had 22 and nine in their first tournament game yesterday. Uh, so they have their full roster and uh, they're very experienced. They have a lot of a lot of talent. So we've, we've uh, we'll, we'll watch uh, their last few games and, and go through uh, their season. Look at some uh, look at how teams have played them. And uh, I'm sure they'll do, do the same for us. Uh, Ryan Karchi. Andy, I know you guys have played some solid big men over the course of the season, but what does McCormick bring and what do you need to see from Evan to, to be able to contain a guy like that? McCormick outweighs Evan. He's very physical. He's uh, not quite as long and athletic as Evan is because Evan is uh, seven feet, 210 pounds with that wingspan. But McCormick is a different type of big than Evan. He's more of a low block physical physical duck-in guy, uh, and everything is done in the lane and around the basket with angles and ceiling in the post. So uh, Evan, Evan and Isaiah and Chavez and whoever else we put in there is going to have to use their quickness or athleticism and, and their toughness. Uh, McCormick is as good a big as we faced all season. He averaged about 13 or 14 points. As I said he just had 22 and nine in the last game, and, and he's a very dangerous low, low block scorer. Okay, uh, Mark Culkin. Hey, Coach. Um, you, you've had a little time now to reflect back after the win and, and maybe even watch, you know, how the Pac-12 has done so far uh, through the first round. Um, right now, it looks like you guys are, are even favored in the, in the game against Kansas by a couple of lines. Is that a sign of respect for your team in the conference that maybe it was overlooked heading into the tournament? Well, I, I can't comment on lines or whatever anybody else thinks. I, I can just comment on what I think. I think the Pac-12 the last two years has been as good a conference as any conference in the, in the country. Uh, I think we would have had six teams in the tournament last year. This year, uh, we had five, and we're doing very well. Uh, I do. Uh, I think uh, our league schedule has prepared us for this NCAA tournament, as you've seen. Uh, we, I think the Pac-12 is undefeated still uh, in, in the tournament. So uh, our league is, is very good. We put put 10 players in the NBA draft last year. The Pac-12 put 10 players in the NBA draft last year. We had, we only had one. So we had one, one NBA draft pick. The league had 10 and there'll be more this year as well. So if you look at the, uh, 
rosters, the NBA teams, there, there are a lot of Pac-12 players on it. And, and the, uh, some of the teams that finished in the bottom half of our league are really good basketball teams. And, uh, and, and of course, the top half, most of the, the five in the top six are, are here right now. So uh, I, I think uh, the Pac-12 has really done well so far. And, and of course, uh, I think we're all going to try to, to, to play our best tomorrow to represent our schools as well as our league. And I know Isaiah will be coming on uh, after you. Was last night's game with, with Isaiah maybe his best game aggressively with, you know, attacking the basket, using angles, the backboard, just reading the floor? Isaiah was spectacular last night. He played a very smart offensive game. He, he made one three. He's been shooting three very well lately, the last three or four games. He also got deep position, but he's very patient, and he took great shots. And I thought his defense was just uh, just outstanding. So he played a complete game at 15 points, but but he did it in a very efficient manner. Okay, we'll go now to Shotgun. Hey Andy, is there a team you played this season that Kansas reminds you of? Uh, I was trying to think of that today, but but no, not really. Uh, they have a a true big man. Uh, Lightfoot comes off the bench at the backup five, uh, but but with a true big man and the amount of shooting that they have, they made 13 threes yesterday uh, and the size that they have across their guards, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're unique because uh, you just don't find too many teams in college basketball like them. Uh, and that's why they're that's why they're a top 10 team in the country. They're they're, they're very, very good. And how much concern do you have with, with their perimeter defense just initiating the offense? You know, their, their perimeter guards are really, you know, kind of elite defenders. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, they deny you. They push you out, extend your offense by, by uh, denying you the ball or, or putting pressure on you sometimes in a full court. So we'll have to be prepared for that. It's not – we've seen that type of defense throughout the season. So that, that won't be new to us. We just have to handle the pressure and, and, and make smart decisions. Okay, we'll go back to Ryan Karchi, and I'll remind people, if you do have a question, please raise your hand. Andy, it seems like Isaiah's had, you know, some good games sprinkled in throughout the season. It's been a, a bit inconsistent. What's the key to him sort of ironing out those issues and being more consistent on a night-to-night -night basis? Well, he's coming on after me, so you may, may want to ask him that question. Uh, but very proud of Isaiah. He played a terrific game last night. He's been one of our captains with Ethan. Has been a been a leader. Uh, he doesn't have to score a lot of points to be effective. He's our best defender in the, in the interior. He can switch on guards. He's he's improved dramatically uh, from the defensive end, and and he really is a good complement to Evan and Chavez because he he can do a lot of the things uh, from a from a uh, uh, he just sees he sees things as they're happening or in advance. Is able to anticipate things uh, defensively. And then we can switch him on guards, and he's, he's become a very good switch defender, giving guys cushions, making them drive towards him and using his length to, to challenge or block their shots. So I uh, can't say enough about his defensive improvement. And offensively, he has been inconsistent at times this year, but he's been playing very good basketball lately. And uh, I, I think you saw a very efficient game for him last night, and uh, he just needs to keep giving us that productivity. If we, will, uh, if we have a chance to advance on Monday, uh, he needs to play a good game. And I know we talked about Evan on McCormick, but how big of a role do you anticipate Isaiah will have in terms of defending him and, and keeping him away from the basket? Well, I, I think Isaiah has proven that he can guard bigger guys in the post. So, so uh, he may start on him, he may not, but, but I'm sure there'll be times throughout the game that Chavez, Evan, and Isaiah will be on McCormick. He, he's a tough guy to handle in the low post, so we'll probably have to do a lot of switching who, who we guard with. Okay, uh, last call for questions for Coach Enfield. Andy, I don't see any more questions, so we'll, we'll excuse you. We appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, best of luck to you tomorrow night. <clears throat> we'll, we'll talk to you then. Thank you. And we'll now bring in uh, Isaiah Mobley. All right, great. Hey, Isaiah, thanks for joining us. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, to the media, please raise your hand if you have a question. I'll call on you. Uh, keep yourselves on mute otherwise. Uh, and we'll start with, uh, with Ryan Karchi. 
Isaiah, obviously McCormick plays a huge part in, in what they do offensively. What makes it so difficult to guard him? Uh, he's a big dude. Uh, he's extremely active. Um, I've known him for a while, played him against him a couple of times coming up on the AAU circuit. Um, so, yeah, he's a, he's a good dude. He's, he has a high IQ. Um, he uh, has a high motor. He's real active, and uh, he's just an overall big fella. Now, Coach Enfield was just talking about your defense. How much have you prided yourself just on, on that defense this season, and what's been key to you maybe improving on that side of the ball? Um, just just uh, knowing where to be, being at my spot early um, so I can be prepared for whatever action the defense is running. Um, defense, to me, is something I feel like I always can uh, take care of. Like, the, the ball is not always going to fall, um, shooting jumpers and, and, and finishing around the rim. You're going to have rough games, but you always can play defense and, and rebound. So those two th are two things I really pride myself on. Okay, next question to uh, Adam Grossbart. Isaiah, you've made uh, five of your last six attempts from three-point range. Uh, what's been the process of, you know, adding that element to your offensive game, and what is it that has led to, you know, so much success just these past few games? Um, just really holding my follow through. Um, I watched uh, some of the film throughout the regular season um, before coming in and playing in the Pac-12 conference games. Um, and just just tweaking a, a couple little things. Um, the misses that I had weren't necessarily all bad misses, but I just really wasn't holding my follow through. And so now I've just been making a point to, to do so. And I, I've had a lot of success with it both in practice and in the games. So I plan to just keep on doing that and keep on shooting it as I go out there. And in those AAU matchups with McCormick, like what really stands out when you think back on how those battles went between you and your brother and him? Um, just uh, just making sure you know where he's at at all times because uh, even when he doesn't have the ball, he's a big dude, so it's hard to box him out and uh, get those rebounds. So um, it's going to be a dogfight down there, uh, especially with all the all what's on the line now. Um, and I'm sure he's got grown and gotten better since the last time we played. And uh, me and Evan as well have gotten better. So um, I'm excited to see how that goes. All right, we'll go to Ryan Young. What can a game like yesterday uh, do for you personally, just confidence wise and, and kind of trusting your offensive game? Um, it did a lot. Um, it helped me out. Um, I always try to carry myself with a lot of pride and confidence. Um, I feel like throughout this whole uh, postseason, I've been playing pretty well. Um, but uh, la uh, last game felt really good, um, especially just to get my first tournament win. Um, my confidence went up a lot uh, starting the game off with a dunk. So uh, that was pretty cool. And like I kind of played with an extra chip on my shoulder not being able to play here last year. Um, with the, with my guys, um, the seniors and all that stuff. So uh, I'm excited and um, I'm totally like carry that confidence and, and that shooting and stuff performance into the next game against Kansas. In, in general this season, what's been the way you kind of challenged yourself to in your offensive development and the kind of thing you've been focused on really emphasizing and improving this year? Um, just figuring out ways to score within our offense. Um, Evan and Taj play a big part in that throughout the season. So I've just been trying to figure out my role, and I feel like I finally – it's a little late, but Philly really have that that role uh, and what I can do and where I can help us consistently. So um, I plan to just hopefully carry that out for as long as we keep on dancing, which is hopefully for a couple more games. Thank you. Back on Spratling. Isaiah, what's this experience been like for the last week and a half? You know, just being basically – quarantine in hotels in Las Vegas and now in Indianapolis? Um, for us being in uh, being L.A. out here, I feel like the transition wasn't as hard. It's definitely a little different because in L.A., like, we still grocery shop and stuff like that, and, and you kind of get a little sunlight when you go on your way to practice. But we've been really in the house throughout the season. So uh, I feel like that's one of the things to our advantage. Um, it's kind of boring, to be honest, because um, you just kind of sit around, you eat lunch, you go to practice, and then – you kind of sit around some more. It's cool because it's an exciting time to watch games. Like we've been in each other's rooms watching some of the games um, that's been playing, like like Texas and ACU last night and stuff like that. So that's cool and seeing some people you know play. But um, it's honestly it's it's not much. Um, I definitely wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you didn't have to do it. 
It, and then you talked about, you know, figuring out your role with the off season and the fact that you guys weren't able to practice as much leading into the season. Has it taken longer for guys to figure out exactly what their roles are on this team with so many new pieces? Yeah, definitely. Um, we had we had like yeah, a good amount of transfers and grad transfers this year. So, and then also people not knowing if they're gonna play uh, up until they the NCA changed the rule to to um, red shirts, normal red shirts would, are allowed to play. So um, it's definitely different. Um, but like it's a business and and it, like the show goes on. So we just had to figure out throughout throughout the season. And our team is super talented as well. So any anyone's like anyone can can score twenty points on our team. So um, it's just it's a different dynamic, it's something I'm not necessarily have been used to. So, uh, um, but I'm glad our talent has got us here and our hard work and and just continue to ride it out. Hi, Adam Grossbart. Isaiah, have you talked to any of the seniors uh, from last year's team? Have they reached out just to, you know, let you know that they've been watching or anything like that? Oh, definitely. Um, all the guys, uh, Nick, Jonah, Daniel, uh, Q, they all, they all stay tuned in. Uh, they text us, uh, 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 Nick and, um, Nick, Nick and Daniel text me before last game. Um, just saying like ball out, you know what I'm saying? Have fun out there. And so, um, but no, yeah. And I was also, also just keep them in mind and keep our, uh, like last year, not getting this opportunity in mind while, while I'm out here. So I just try to take every, take advantage of every moment that we have out here. Is it cool at all just to get this experience tomorrow where you're playing in, you know, a historic stadium like Hinkle Fieldhouse against one of the Blue Bloods in the country? Yeah, this is definitely what you live for. Like, if, if this game doesn't give you any motivation, then uh, I don't think college basketball is a sport for you. Um, uh, this is a big, big time game. Um, round 32 going into the Sweet 16, playing against a, a Blue Blood school that we were supposed to play uh, initially anyways. So, there's even that going into it, and uh, I got a couple of buddies on the other team, so it's 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 all around just a prideful, uh, fun experience that I'm looking forward to. Uh, let's go to Mark Culkin. Hey Isaiah, I was telling Coach um, after the game, you know that last night I thought you played maybe your most aggressive game offensively. Uh, like you had mentioned, you attacked the rim opening. Uh, you were using angles, using the backboard. You found your role um, and kind of grew into it. Your other team captain, Ethan Anderson, his production on the court has kind of fallen off a little bit. What are you doing as the other team captain to kind of keep him involved and know that he's still uh, contributing to the team and helping? Um, just just staying positive with them. Um, uh, everyone believes in Ethan. He, uh, he's a great player. Um, and he's had his ups and downs of injury this season. Um, and then also like his role has changed throughout the season as well. So it's not been as easy. And, and then this COVID year in general hasn't been easy on anybody. So um, just staying positive, knowing that um, keeping him engaged because we need him, um, especially like in, when, when his offense is going like, like just like I, how mine was lacking at certain points of the year, just um, pick it up on defense and in other areas, pressure the ball, um, kind of stay poised, um, he, handle the ball like because like we wouldn't be where we are today without him well, both when he's playing and not playing because it teaches the guys a lot that um that they don't necessarily know or did they weren't taught as much uh at their previous schools for those transfers that we have so um just making sure that he knows he's important and um keeping that positivity in his head and, and with this team because it, it, you guys are so close from going from good to great is it really just a matter of confidence with this team I think definitely um, once when we all are confident, I think I, I don't think really anyone in the country could beat us. Um, I feel like most of our losses that we have endured this year were more so because of we lost the game rather than the other team beating us. Um, just because like like the little things, free throws, rebounds, 50 50 balls, defensive assignments that we knew we should have been guarding him a certain way versus in another way. Um, more so than a team just out big in us or out having more talent than us um so that i think we if we clean up those little mistakes then i think we can make a real real run in uh in the dance out here great thank you okay uh last call for questions for isaiah i don't see any hands raised i'll give you a second if anyone does 
Okay, Isaiah, well, I appreciate you joining us uh, today um, and we'll let you go also. Uh, I do wanna remind the uh, uh, USC Beat Media on the call that we do have a Zoom uh, call tomorrow morning with the seven players that are football players that are participating in Pro Day for USC. That information was emailed to you a while ago. Uh, you should have the Zoom link from football on that. Just a reminder if you wanna participate in that. Uh, with that, uh, we appreciate uh, media uh, being on the call with us today, and we will uh, talk to you after the game tomorrow. With that, uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.